Chronic low back pain affects a significant portion of the global population. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the six most common causes of chronic low back pain that we see in our clinic, with most of these not being discussed by the average sports medicine physician, interventional pain doc, or orthopedic surgeon. I will also break down different aspects of how these different causes of low back pain present themselves and our approach for understanding of these as a cause of pain. At the end of the video, I will discuss what we have found to be the most effective treatment approaches for each condition. The six most common causes of chronic low back pain that we see in our clinic are, in no particular order, annular fissure, facet osteoarthritis or facet syndrome, sacroiliac joint dysfunction, interspinous and supraspinous ligament laxity or sprain, clunial neuralgia, and iliolumbar ligament laxity or sprain. First one to talk about is the annular fissure. Now what we usually find here is that pain is centralized, meaning it's a dead smack in the middle of your low back and it gets worse when you bend forward. Some people even experience increased pain with coughing or sneezing. On top of a thorough physical exam, MRIs is gonna be extremely valuable in diagnosing this. However, we've had cases where an annular fissure is seen on an MRI, but we determine it is not the cause of pain. And sometimes these annular fissures are missed by radiologists. While some people may advocate for provocative discography to help diagnose the annular fissure as a cause of pain, this is not something we advocate for at this time due to studies showing increased rate of degenerative disc disease in the discs that have undergone this diagnostic procedure. The second one on our list is pain from the facet joints, which could be due to either facet osteoarthritis or facet syndrome. This one differs from disc pain because the pain is generally localized on one side, but sometimes it can be on both sides if both sides are involved. If you find your low back hurting more when arching your back or laying on your stomach and it gets better when leaned forward, you might be dealing with a facet issue. Physical exam is crucial here as it's relatively easy to load the facet joints to test if they're painful or not. But in complicated cases, dual medial branch blocks, one with the short acting and one with the long acting anesthetic is the best way to make this diagnosis prior to treatment. Third up is sacroiliac joint dysfunction, a condition that has been mostly downplayed by the conventional medical community only until recently. The pain here tends to be lower than the pain from your facet joint and often lies directly over the SI joint itself. Sometimes the pain can wrap around the hip or even shoot down the back of the leg, mimicking hip joint pain and sciatica. The physical examination is where we make the most of our SI joint diagnoses, with imaging not being overly helpful in most cases. If we're gonna have a patient undergo a diagnostic SI joint injection, we ensure that the anesthetic will be injected both inside and outside the joint. We've seen too many people who have their pain coming from the SI joint ligaments, but because the SI joint injection that they had didn't reduce their pain and it was only intra-articular, their SI joint was written off of as a potential cause of their pain. This can occur because in a majority of patients with SI joint dysfunction, most of the pain is coming from those ligaments. Fourth on the list is rarely ever talked about and it's interspinous or supraspinous ligament laxity or a full-blown sprain. Because these ligaments get elongated with bending forward, pain tends to be centralized and often mimics disc pain, getting worse with forward bending. However, the pain from these ligaments generally doesn't worsen when you cough or sneeze, nor does it radiate down your leg. In our practice, we found that damage to these ligaments will result in pain when pressing on the spinous process of the low back, those bony little bumps that you feel right in the middle of your back. This also helps us to differentiate from annular fissure as that's commonly not seen. Fifth on our list is the iliolumbar ligament laxity or sprain. This is actually one of the things that went undiagnosed for me for several years when I had my back pain and I didn't start to see lasting pain relief for my chronic low back pain until I had these treated with PRP. The pain from this is usually one-sided, but if both ligaments are involved, it can be felt on both sides. The pain often worsens when sitting for extended periods of time or leaning away from the painful side. For me, the pain also radiated down my leg all the way into my ankle. Physical exam is crucial for this one as an overstretched ligament is generally not gonna show up as positive on an MRI. Last but not least, we have clunial neuralgia. This is by far the most underappreciated contributor to chronic low back pain, especially in people who feel like they have just tried about everything and anything for their low back pain. We have seen this diagnosis be mistaken for facet joint pain, SI joint dysfunction, and even disc pain from an annular fissure. 
Pain from the cluneal nerves is often localized on one side, but again, if both sides are involved, you can see it on both sides. Because pain from the cluneal nerves is often worse bending forward, it is sometimes mistaken for atypical disc pain. Pressing along the iliac crest often reveals a lot of discomfort, and sometimes you can even feel painful nodules, which a lot of the times is actually an irritated nerve crossing over the iliac crest. Physical evaluation is crucial here, as MRIs do not visualize these small nerves well. An important note that I want to make is when you are out there seeing physicians for your low back pain, it is crucial that your doctor is already versed in how to evaluate for all of those conditions and more. If they're unaware of the role the cluneal nerves play in causing chronic pain, they're likely not trained to properly evaluate for this condition, which could mean it goes undiagnosed and you go untreated. Or if your doctor doesn't recognize that a small annular fissure can cause severe low back pain, you may not get the proper diagnosis and therefore treatment for your pain, leaving you feeling stuck. Now, as promised, let's talk about what I did to significantly reduce my back pain and what we have found to be the most effective treatment approaches for each condition in our clinical practice. In addition to the basic foundations of tissue health, my pain has been most helped by targeted injections of PRP and stem cell therapy. To date, I've undergone probably 15 to 20 dextrose prolotherapy injections, about eight PRP injections and one stem cell procedure. The one that helped me the most was my stem cell procedure, where I had my own bone marrow constrict injected into various areas in my low back, all the areas that were causing me pain, and that resulted in almost four years of near 100% pain relief. It is because of the results that I have seen with my own back that I practice this type of medicine to help others. In our practice, we found that PRP and stem cell therapy yield the best outcomes, which is why we don't perform dextrose prolotherapy anymore. When looking back at all six common causes of low back pain that we discussed, the key difference in treatment lies in where we inject the PRP or stem cells. And this is always based on the diagnosis. An intradiscal injection is crucial for an annular fissure, whereas a nerve hydrodized section is needed if the cluneal nerves are the culprit. Ultimately, the treatment must be dictated by the root cause, and that's why the diagnosis is so crucial. All right, that wraps up our exploration of the six most common causes of chronic low back pain that we see in our clinic. I truly hope that you found some value in today's discussion. Remember, understanding your pain is the first step towards effective treatment.